Rise with us, with the praises of our King. Rise. 
enter into worship this morning. If you know the song, just please sing the song with us. Amen.
giving and receiving, uh, and the come, asking for those who can support this time of giving, and invite you to do so. You may see a rabbit here, what is this offering for? This offering is for the support of the ministry. St. Mark is a friend of the ministry. So we ask that we can provide some financial support for this cause. We will appreciate it. Also, if you have a prayer request this morning, and that to the earth as they come by, we will get a seat on your behalf.
And so God has given us this awesome resource, this, this spiritual discipline, if you will, which is known as prayer. It helps us to get through the ups and downs of life. In this life, you will have trials, you will have tribulations. But Jesus says, be of courage, be of good courage, because you will overcome. Yeah. Just like yeah. he has overcome, we will as well. And so we're thankful to God that we don't have to go at it all by ourselves. We don't have to go at life all by ourselves. In the good times, we got the Lord on our side. And in the bad times, yeah. we have the Lord on our side. So we are excited when we come to this time of our worship service because we know that God can use this time to do some awesome things in our lives. What we have to do is just be patient. Just trust God to do what he said he's going to do. Now we all know that the Lord may not come when we want him to, but he's always what? On time. So we just need to hold on until our change comes. We've been asked to pray this morning for Nancy Penn, as well as Mary Phillip. Both are ill. And we've been asked to pray for Timothy Wright. He's looking for a place of, of domicile, a place of residency as well as his sister praying for his sister Cynthia Nash uh, for health and some other person's name I, I can't oh health and benefits so Cynthia Nash is in need of prayer for health as well as benefits and then um, if you're reading the news like a lot of us are hearing the news like a lot of us are there's a lot of unrest both near and abroad and one of our faithful members, Maggie, uh, is asking for us to pray for her home country, Amen. Venezuela, uh, this, which is really in turmoil right now. Yeah. They, they are really in turmoil. They are on the brink of, of civil war. And the United States is contemplating what part we should play in this. Right now, we're trying to play a humanitarian part by providing the basic needs such as food and water and medicine. But because of the current leadership that is being blocked, for whatever reason, uh, it's being blocked. And so we have two competing interests that's going on. Not only in Venezuela, but all around the world. And that's the, that's the competing interest of good and evil. And that's really what's at the root of all this, good and evil, God and Satan. Because with everything that we are up against, it is spiritual in nature. At the root of whatever it is, it's spiritual. And so that's what's happening. That's what's going on in Venezuela. And we want to pray for them. Her family is still there. And so, of course, we know that's where her heart is. And we want to lift them up as well as our own country. As well as our own country. All right, for those who would like to come down. If you want to come down during this time of intercessory prayer, we invite you to do so.
our mind on the throne of heaven as we have done many times before Lord we come this morning leaning on you but we first want to say thank you for what you've already done in our lives thank you how you, you have been with us every sense our existence how you have watched over us and you've, you've taken care of us you've provided for us you've navigated our circumstances you've kept us from hurt, all hurt, harm and danger you, you've kept us from the wishes and the desires of the evil one who wants to do nothing but to kill, steal and destroy and so Father we thank you for your divine protection your divine providence as well as your divine provisions we are like the psalmist this morning when he says if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side where would we be and if the truth be told some of us will be on the bridge right now if the truth be told some of us will be walking the streets if the truth will be told We'll be laid up in the hospital. If the truth will be told, we'll be out in the cemetery. But because of the Lord who has been on our side, we are here this Sunday morning with a reasonable portion of help and strength. We thank you, Father, because of your grace and your mercy, we made it through this past week. And so we want the record to show today that we are thankful for what you have done in our lives. Father, we pause now and we want to intercede on behalf of these, these prayer requests. These are people, Father, who are, who are trusting you and leaning on you for whatever it is that they're in need of. To the point where they have made it publicly known that they need prayer and so we call out right now the name of nancy penn mary Phillip, both who are ill both who are need divine healing we ask right now that you would bring the healing that is needed pray for timothy wright who is looking for a place of domicile, who's just looking for a place to stay. And we ask that you would put him in contact with the right people, that you would connect the dots for him, and that it would end up and result in a place of, of, of residence. And then we, pr we pray right now for better health and, and better benefits for uh, Cynthia Nash that you will bless her with the needed resources. And then for the civil unrest that's in Venezuela, in the home country of Maggie Phillips, where her relatives are, where her roots are. Lord, it's just so much turmoil right now. The, the climate is not good right now. People are fighting just for the basic necessities right now things that we in America take so for granted. They, they just need water. They, they just need some food. They just need some medicine. The, the, the basics are, are in jeopardy. And Lord, it's because of sin. It's because of evil. And we just ask right now that you will bind the spirit, the demonic spirit that is hovering over that country. Pray, Lord, that you will break through the strongholds and that you allow good to overcome evil. So Father, we pray for the leadership in that country, and we pray for whatever part that the United States can play in this. Lord, help us not to get in your way. If it's your will for us to intervene, let that be, but if it's not, help us just not to get in your way. So we pray for the guidance and leadership of our president that you would direct his decision making. And then for all the unrest that we have in our own country, all the injustices, all of the prejudices, all of the evils that's, that plagues this country. 
while we pray right now. Pray for every church door that stands open in your land. Because we know there is a part that we play in all of this. And Father, I pray for those who are under the sound of my weak voice, who are here this morning, who may not have made known publicly the concerns they may have. But Lord, you know, and you've already provided. So we just want to cover St. Mark in prayer. Pray for the leadership of this church as well as the fellowship. Now, Lord, as we go further in this service, we ask you to take us higher in the Lord. Pray that all that we do will be to your glory and then to our good. It's in Jesus' name that the church say amen.
they knew that they were almost home and they knew they were almost free. Right? And so there was another character when, uh, uh, what's his name, Douglas? Yeah. 
see them coming, the first thing you do, oh, here comes trouble. But they're still your family, right? Yes. That's the way it is with God. All of us are God's children through the new birth of Jesus Christ. But all of us do not have the benefits of the blessings of God is because we're out of fellowship with God. Yes, yes, yes. That's why we need to come closer to God. We need to dwell with God. Continue in our confidence, our trust, and our love in God. And once you do that, once you get closer to God, watch the blessings of the Lord flow your way. Amen. You know, as a child of God, you need to come out of the complaint line. Go over to the window. Go over to the one that says, claim your blessings. Once you start naming your blessings one by one, seeing what the Lord has done for you, you'll stop complaining about the little things and start enjoying the big blessings that God has just for you. Do you not know God has so many blessings for you and he can't give them to you? because you won't get close enough to him in order for him to bless you with your desires. And the Bible teaches us when our ways please him, he'll give you the joys of your heart. Amen. You won't ever have to ask God for anything. Just be the child that he loves and God will give you, Thank you what you never expected Thank to have. Yeah. Yeah. Many, many blessings. Yes, you will do that. But you've got to get close to it. And I've said before, he's the king of the kingdom. And if you're a child of the king, don't walk around homeless. Don't walk around starving. Yes. He's got a cattle of a thousand hills. Yes. And you sitting up hungry. Mm -hmm. He's got a in his hand. Yeah. And you beg him. Mm -hmm. Why is it that a king's child walks around raggedy? Mm -hmm. Complaining and grumbling. When daddy is rich, all the houses and land, and you're on the street, you beg him. Don't seem like a king's kid to me. Get closer to God. And you won't have to worry about what Trump is doing. You won't have to worry about what going on in Venezuela. That's right. God knows his own. Right. And his own knows him. Yes. Yes. And whatever situation you find yourself in, he's a present help in times of distress. Come to know the Lord. Come to trust God. Regardless of whether you're facing a fiery furnace or a lion, then you can be like those Hebrew boys. Our God is able. Yes, yes. Even in the midst of, of, of a furnace, even in the midst of a lion's den, God will let you sleep on the lion, take his appetite away. Yeah, he will. God will meet you in the fire, and you can have fellowship in the midst of the fire. He'll make your enemies your footstool. But he'll never make your enemy your footstool until he gives you enough grace not to step on it. That's what God is about. He's there for you and me. Continue to abide in him. And he will abide in you. And whatsoever you ask in his son's name, He's going to do it.
That's how easy it is to be blessed of God. Now today is our sermon that day. And this is a special occasion today for St. Mark. We have one of our brothers who has announced his calling. He's burning within. And he's ready to throw that fire out at you. We don't want you to burn up too fast, brother. But we don't want you to last time. Always. We we're praying for him and I'm proud of him. I'm really proud of him. And he's going to come immediately after Brother Ricky. And he's going to tell us what thus say. Amen. 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 So put up your fire stingers. Let it burn. <laughs> around 
but you can't hide. God is trustworthy. He is our protector. If we only stay with him. But I heard the songwriter say it also uh, because, listen, why he does what he does. Because of who he is. Uh, because he loves me. Say the Lord, I will rescue him. And if, when you look at it, it's talking about Jesus. Oh, yeah. It's talking about how well, when Jesus was on this road, this pilgrimage, yeah. that God is going to be with him no matter what happens to him. Uh, not only is that, when Paul was bitten by snakes, he did not die right then. No. When God is with you, when God uh, has given you a call in life, yeah. stay with him. No matter what the people say, no matter how bad it may look, no matter how stupid it may sound, stay with God I've told you to do. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm going to hurry up and fix it out. Uh, uh, I will protect you. Uh, uh, not only that, but uh, when I call on him and he answered me, how many you know he's good? To know that when you call on God for something, when you need yeah. something, and God answers your prayer, yeah. oh, how much you feel the yeah. joy yeah. inside. Yeah. Just knowing I can call on yeah. Him, yeah. and He'll come and rescue me. Yeah. He'll give me comfort of mind. Yeah. He may not rescue me out of what I'm in, yeah. but He'll give me His words of comfort yeah. to know that I can stand. Yeah. Yeah. They call. When I call, he answers me. Because I'm connected to him. I will, I will be with him in trouble. God is with us, y'all. But we got to stay focused on him. And let me say this again to be redundant. That when God delivered the children of Israel with the ten plagues, watch this, only the Egyptians, their crops, their values, was marked. Mm -hmm. But the Bible says the, the Hebrew children, nothing happened. Yeah. Right. They still had food to eat. Yeah. They had clothes to wear. Yeah. The young folks say shoes on my feet, yeah. a roof over my head, clothes on my back. Yeah. Yeah. Our God is a rescuing God. I will deliver him and honor him with long life and I will satisfy him and, sh and show him my
very precious. Yeah. You gotta have a spiritual moment. Yeah. But uh, when we heard that day, <coughs> first of all, I want to thank my Lord Savior. Yeah. Yeah. And my pastor, yeah. Alan James Madison. Yeah. And his wife, Sister yeah. Madison. Yeah. And Brother Barry and his wife and other sisters. And family and friends. And of course, well, you know you have to seal it up, you know. You <laughs> know you a <laughs> but uh, just as I know, um, we've been thinking about it. we do a lot of suffering, see a lot of sickness, and. Uh, and do the things we're trying to burn this that go on to pieces. But we have to be normal. Yeah. We have to be God. Yeah. Ah, amazing. Mm -hmm. Start and then finish. But I got a word right. that comes from the Lord. Mm -hmm. You know, it was kind of called a strain when I set that calling. I guess about 30 weeks ago. I was sick. But he came to say, I got you. That's your I said, hold on. You got me. I said, well, you had me from the beginning. Probably was in my mother, because he my mother. I didn't know you. But you know me. So, uh, so it went together. I'm going to give you the text in a minute. But we're going to go pray to the problem. My heavenly Father, hoping at this time that your power will dissolve in our mind for we can get transformed in your way to do your will. To be, not to be children of God, but just to be loving one another and doing the right thing with one another, but doing your will. Being obedience yeah. in your name. Yeah. And, Lord, there's a lot of things going on, but you know our suffering. Yeah. You know our trials. Yeah. You know our tribulations. Because you are the God. You are the Creator. You know it all. All powerful. Super natural. Yeah. Just want to say, in your name, we pray. Amen. Well, I hope you all have your book of correction to live. Well, sometimes I may say a cookbook. Hey, one thing about a cookbook, I'm talking about the Bible now. Hey, uh, a cookbook has all kinds of ingredients for us to make a cake or make a pie. But what I'm talking about, to get a right back, just no standing with the law. That's uh -huh. So uh, if you have your, your Bible, we're going to go to the Second Corinthians. We're going to be the fourth chapter. We're going to be the seventh verse to the tenth. You know, uh, just listen, just keep out on these words. <coughs> And they're a good nugget from the Lord. Not from the Lord. Yeah, seven, two, ten. Yeah. But we have this treasure in earth vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God, not of us. We are trouble in every side, yeah. but yet not distressed. Yeah. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Mm -hmm. Persecuted, right. but not forsaken. Right. Cast down, 
but not destroy. Always, always bear about in the body the dying of the Lord. Jesus. That the life also of Jesus may be made manifest in our body. Amen. 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 Well, I'm going to give you the text what the Lord gave to the priest. I got your back. You know, you kind of look at that eye. And you even write it down <coughs> on a, a letter or whatever. You cannot write it like a small eye. You got to be more kind of highlighted. You got to be careful about it. Because that eye is very important. Yeah, because uh, I'm not talking about Brother Marvin in this text. Now. I'm talking about the Lord. Uh, and uh, I will be a friend. Somebody that supports the pen on somebody to help in need. We have this intention. Be that I have your back. Before it comes to a point that you make a call, you need to talk to Brother Martin, but he forgot the charge. Uh, Brother Martin said he's going to help you move, but Brother Martin, he forgot. So, you know, it's, it's a lot of things going on, though, know, but we're talking about the war. She got one of that. It's very precious. Because that eye I'm talking about, 24 hours. Right. People answer the call. Even though we don't did wrong, even though we feel persecuted, mm -hmm. or feel low, he will lift us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But one thing about this eye, you got to believe in the help. Yeah. Yeah. So, Brother Morgan sat here all day long and talked the word. If you don't absorb it, grab it, hold it, digest it, don't let it go. But when time comes, you got to stay with it. You got to keep your focus. Don't lose your focus. You got to look at them heels. But you got to remember who came and got up because we didn't go to him. Yes, he came to us. Yeah. Yeah. So we want to say, how are the suffering stuff? Well, since you asked, we're going to bag up. We're going to go to the book <coughs> in the beginning. Come on. Yeah. What is that book? Well, I'm going to say it's the Old Testament, but I'm going to say Genesis. Yeah. We're going to look at that chapter. All right. All right. Okay. Well, well, Adam. I don't want to be hard on but I'm going to tell you like it is because it's about truth and love when it comes to God. So what God did in the Garden of Eden, that where it started from, all the child burning, all the suffering, all the sickness and whatever, God created a man named Adam from the dust of the earth. He got the breath. I'm talking about God. Yes, sir. It will happen. But I'm, I'm just going to cut through this now because the pastor told me, hey, hey Brother Marty, I know you got to keep something for next time. <laughs> just give him just a little bit. Don't give him out because I know you want to talk. You can work this out. But, uh, so we're going to go back to that. So our Lord Savior fell that. Adam needs a companion. Uh -huh. yeah. Oh, so I, I'm not going to go with that, but I'm just going to have to put it right there. Uh, you're not going to go with that right there, but uh, he was the mate of Adam. Yeah. Yeah. But something happened. See, God had told the man, the man, Adam, 
will be taken care of by the Lord. Mm -hmm. Everything. He told his wife, because God had to go into the man. Not in the front. Now, not in the back. Come on. Yes, sir. Right. So, Adam, now he got a wife. That's what happened. Because he learned that made walk. Yeah. So that man together. But, let me get through this. Uh, so, this old circle. Old servant, fell in the dark. Right. From up there, but his master. But he wanted to be like the master and want to, he was different. But that move separate to the side. Let's go back to Eve. Eve got seduced. Yeah? Seduced. Holy seduced. By the servant. But what happened? God had told the man they had responsibilities. Yeah. They had a relationship with yeah. God. Yeah. Yeah. But the man know. He told his wife. Mm -hmm. But the wife caught, not caught up. She bit off of that fruit. Off that tree that mm -hmm. God told Adam, yeah. do not touch. Yes, sir. Do not eat. Get what happened. The tree was pure good and evil. He had many, many trees in the garden. Yeah. But they want to pick that. Because see, Eve thought she could be more than God himself. But he had to go, serpent came and twisted her mind, got it off, off the track, and got it to see. But you know, it happened to us today. Now, hey, don't, don't get hard on Eve. But well, let me move on though. So uh, what happened here is uh, because I don't want to get the hook. But what happened here is that uh, Eve, yeah, she bit. Well, here come my husband. Now the wife, Eve, seduced her husband. Satan certainly liked that. So, so they disobeyed. From the word. <coughs> what happened when he disobeyed? He gets separation. Yeah. Yeah. But you gotta remember, <coughs> I got your back. Yeah. God had our back in the beginning. Yes, sir. Now, yes, sir. tomorrow. Yes, sir. But God had this plan. So, we're going to leave the God of Eden because all this sickness started in God. That's right. Yeah, that's where it started from. Right. And don't get mad at Adam. And don't get mad at Eve. But what God put in plan from the beginning, oh. the backup plan, yeah. that is Jesus Christ. So, you look, when we heard he was lost, uh, feel bad, I don't want to come to church, I feel it hurt, uh, my foot is gone, oh, I just want to come. So you have to have a reverence who God is. Even through this a trial. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I'm gonna tell you like this. It was a book. It is a book. In 2030. See, so See, God's word is still the same. We got to get with the program. We got to get where we got our back. 
So, to pay attention to this, I mean, God, I don't know if it's good. You just want to go to this word. Because first, you are not going to tell you nothing that God ain't going to tell you things. Yeah. But we start time, we need to be to get back to God. But, 23 something. He lost. Is my shepherd. I mean, I mean, don't just listen to Brother Martin. Let the word of God into our minds. I shall not want. We don't need. We got the God. We got the one who got our back. He make. I'm sorry, not King James version. He make me to lie down. In the green house. Right. Yeah. He lead me beside the still water. Protection. He restore my soul. Get that when we weep. He picks us up. And restore back in the right direction. What we need. Not fear. So he restore my soul. He will lead me in the past. Past. Now, not single. <coughs> past. A righteousness for the name's sake. Ye, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, damn, it takes care of We're going to have to die. I'm going to be honest. We, we got to get away from this old body. But we, one day, we're going to have a new time. But we got to go through the process. We're going to get what we got. We got the great shepherd's God. E, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will feel no evil. Nothing. Nothing. But you got to believe that. For that art with me, that rod, that staff, that protection. Yes, sir. Yeah. Protection, you gotta believe that now. Yeah. Don't, don't get Mr. Brother Lord. You gotta resolve it. Prayer 18. Uh oh. Before my <laughs> present of my head. Man. Though anoint my head with all, my cup run over. All right. Surely, goodness yeah. and mercy shall I follow me. All the days of my life. I would dwell in the house of the Lord forever. See, this is good. God got out of the bank. Like I said before, now he had his beginning. He got me back tomorrow. He turned to me. But he came to me and told me something. And I don't want to pull me up like uh, I guess that's uh, one o'clock the other night. And I walked up to him and said, I need some hand in the two to Now, Lord, how do you know? I love it. But I got to go to work out there, work out there, and I got to get up. <laughs> you know, uh, I bought that. I, I try to go to sleep and try to, you know, go out to my wife, although whenever we had our one-eyed grandbaby, why? She sleeps like this one. I mean, I thought somebody was trying to break in. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but uh, then when the grandbaby in the belly, he gets back to the leg on the top of him, what's going on? Like, he nobody in the bed? <laughs> but, but, this is the deal. Uh, he came to me. He said, well, if I got you all back, mm. we got to get home. Who back do we got? Mm. Yeah. Well, you don't work on We got to work on So, you, what you tell the man that we got to get our mind together? Mm. Well, oh, oh, that's right. We gotta support one another. 
we got to love one another. Yeah. We don't look at somebody roll their eyes. And I don't say, you know, I can't cover that sister back to cover. She looked at me. <laughs> brother, brother, guess me. He didn't say yes to me. So I cannot cover his back. So, Lord, what are you supposed to do? Well, I'm going to help you out. It carries us. We buy love and love. Mm -hmm. We don't look at nobody's fault. Even so, somebody's broken. Mm -hmm. Think about it. What would you do? Because he won't get out of that. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you so.
This is good news, the very meaning of the word gospel. The scripture teaches us that we have complete access to God through Jesus Christ and his sacrifice on the cross. Because our lives are cleansed by Christ's blood, we can draw near to God with full assurance that he will receive us. This is so very different from the Old Testament era when approaching God was scared. Aren't you glad that you can go to God for yourself? All you have to do is go down on your knees and call on the name of the Lord. See, we see in verse 22a we have access. The lead statement, the lead in in this statement here is amazing. Let us draw near to God. To a Jewish, Jewish audience, this was an amazing statement. It was amazing because the statement that anyone could approach God was nearly impossible under the old custom. Well. The writer here, however, is stating without a doubt that access to God is not only possible. Yeah. We are encouraged to do so. Yeah. God has granted access yeah. through his son, Jesus Christ. Right. How many people are missing out on God's presence? Because they simply do not know how available it is. Yes. Sadly, so many people are not aware in their spiritual thirst mm. that he who is living water is readily available and can quench their thirsty soul and grant access yeah. to the very presence of God himself. All right. Also in verse 22, a there's a certain attitude we must have. Sincerity is more than just a light emotion. It means to come to God with a genuine desire to be truthful with him, as well as truthful with ourselves. God does not do well with hypocrites. Jesus had some of the strongest words with hypocrites in his own day. Sincerity is more than just attempting to be honest. It is being honest. It is possible to be sincere and sincerely wrong. It is thus more than a surface understanding of sincerity. Yeah. That is being spoken of here. The literal idea is with a truthful heart. Yeah. Yeah. It is the idea of what Jesus meant when he said that those who wanted to worship God must worship him in spirit and truth. Right. Yeah, that's right. To be pure means to come sincere. Mm. The Lord never turned away from a sincere heart, reaching out to him. Yeah, yeah. But it was a fallen woman of low regard of people with addiction problems, mm. like alcohol and drugs, All right. or those who were known sinners in his culture, like tax collectors. Whenever Jesus met someone who was truthful, he reached out to them. He would go out of his way to spend time with a truthful sinner. Yeah, yeah. Like Zacchaeus. The woman at the well was another truthful person. Although Jesus had to kind of pull it out of her, but her sincere heart brought her into a light of God's saving grace. Don't you go before God full of sin. You need to confess your sin and be truthful with God. See, when we come with a sincere heart, God grants full and quick access always to us. It is a door open. In verse 22b, we see we have assurance. It is important to know Note that assurance comes only by faith. This, of course, means that one cannot be assured of their place before God without faith. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 11 and 6 says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Yeah, right. Our assurance is the result of Christ's sacrifice. Right. And our faith in him and the work he has done. Only when that faith is properly placed do we experience this absolute assurance. Sometimes it's hard to have faith because things don't always work out the way we want them 
are expecting to. Yeah. But what happened, but when that happens, that is exactly when our faith works best. And it is then when our faith gives us the greatest assurance. If we belong to Christ, we need not fear anything that might come down the pipe. Faith brings this important assurance to our hearts and our minds. We are his and because of this we have full access to him. Now as well as in the future. Also in verse 22b, we are acquitted. Our hearts are clean when we come to Christ. He has acquitted us of all our sins by the work of Calvary through his death and resurrection. Guilty, we could not come before his presence. Like the high priest in the Old Testament, entering into the holies of holies, which sin in their heart meant immediate death. But Christ's sacrifice was perfect. His shed blood made possible our cleansing from all sin, and thus freedom to stand in his presence. It is important to realize that this cleansing is true, whether we always feel it or not. Faith works in good times and bad times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody said on a full stomach, a faith on a full stomach may be simply content. But if you have it when you're home, yeah. it is genuine. Yeah. See, real faith says I will serve the God yeah. in spite of what I'm going through. Yeah. I may not have much. I may be struck. I may be sick in my body, but I'm going to keep on serving the Lord. My faith is in God. See, no matter what we face in this life, good things or bad, we can face God at all times because we belong to him. And he has cleansed us and acquitted us of all guilt and sin. See, we must never fear to come into his presence. We must always come with a cleansed heart. He will never push us aside. In verse 22, c we are accredited. No more guilty conscience when we come to Christ. So many people hold on to their past sins. And by doing so, they are robbing themselves of the joy of being saved. They also make it harder to come into the presence of God with a clear conscience when they don't allow their own forgiveness for past sins. Jesus made it pretty clear. When we come to him and receive him, all our sins are forgiven. And we are new creatures, born again. Old things have passed away. All things become new. Approaching our Lord is supposed to be a thing of joy, not fear. This is why the Bible states, perfect love cast out all fear. The bottom line in an imperfect world is that we are the winners. We are tuned into another kingdom which will never lose or pass away. See, we need to act and live like winners. Look at the person next to you and say, I am a winner. See, no matter what we're facing in life, God has already determined the outcome of our faith. And that is eternity with him. See, we can live in a fallen world like victors with a clean conscience. Our sin has been taken away. This was symbolized even in the Old Testament by the sheep goat that had the sins of Israel pronounced on his head. And then was led out into the desert to disappear. See, once the high priest had confessed the sins of the people and made a blood sacrifice for them, they were reminded that such sin disappeared forever. Why do so many Christians allow themselves to be trapped by their past? It is unnecessary and unproductive and can spoil the joy of coming into God's presence. Like the hit song in the animated movie Frozen said, let it go, let it go, let it go. It would be hard to draw near to God 
if we cling to our past sins or give to them. We also see in verse 22 C, we are accomplished. The final statement in this verse clearly indicate a complete wash. And wash with a pure water. It is not from human effort that this pure water comes from. It is from the fountain of Christ's shed blood. Too many people think they have to earn their salvation. And that getting clean is a work of their own power. It is not our power. It is God's power in us. See, when we falsely assume it is up to our own ability to cleanse ourselves. From our sin, we will discover that it is nearly impossible. We've all heard that cleanliness is next to God. But doesn't it sometimes seem that cleanliness is truly next to impossible? Spiritual cleanliness is only possible through grace of God, by the blood of Christ. See, God desires us to come to him. He calls us to fellowship with him. He has made the way possible. He has paid the price. He has opened the door. All through the work and sacrifice of his son Jesus. Why would you hesitate to come to God? Who has done all the work for you. Paid the price for all sin. And beckoned you to come to him. Jesus said it during his ministry on earth. Come to me all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. See, unlike other religions on this earth, all but one make it up to you to come. With some religions, you have to cut yourself, or shave your head, or jump off a cliff or something to come to God and earn his faith. There is only one religion high up. Yeah, yeah. But God says, come, mm -hmm. I've done it all for you. Well, and that is Christianity. Yeah, sure. Isn't it about how, it isn't about how good you can be right. for God to love you. It is about how good God is that he yes, loves sir. you. Yeah. How can anyone resist the love Jesus Christ showed mm -hmm. by taking the price of sin upon himself? Yeah. Draw near to God. And he will draw near to you. I don't know about you, but I want to be near the cross. If I'm near the cross, I'm near to God. The songwriter said, at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away. See, it was there by faith. I received my sight. And now, and now, and now, I'm happy all the day. See, I don't, I didn't get here on my own today. I didn't get here by myself, brothers. See, I come this far by faith. Leaning on the Lord, trusting in his holy word. You know what? He never, never, he never fell on me yet. Let's get a lot of hands up. Who thinks it's all me? Who's up? We need to draw near to God. So there's somebody here yeah. that's gotten away from God. There's somebody here out of the safety of the arms of God. If you're here today, you need to come down and give your life to Christ. The door is open to you. So we can't do this life alone. We need Jesus in our life. Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. Thank you.
I like to see Sister Ragnar and I'll tell you, Sister Ragnar has such a beautiful spirit. It's, it's as if nothing ever happened. And she keeps you laughing. And Sister Watson says hello to all of you. She's in uh, art. Bradford, that's right. Bradford senior citizen living right now until her home is repaired. That's a beautiful place. The first time I've been there. It is a beautiful place. People are very friendly. And uh, Sister Jackson is still recovering at home. We ask that you continue to pray for her. Amen? Okay, while we're waiting, Herschel's to come. How many of you are using online uh, tithing and offer? <coughs> it would be so nice if the rest of you would kind of get used to that. You know, when we don't see you physically, we can feel you monetarily. <laughs> Amen. Brother Gatson, you don't have to so teaching in the class on that, how to get online, how to do that. Brother Gatson wanted to set it up, so get with Brother Gatson so that when you are not here, you're still represented with your tithes and offer. Amen? Amen. Amen.
For those who don't know, Sister Williams represents uh, Pastors Aid and Lenny. And she has some part of business that she wants to bring to Fort College. Brother Martin. Deliver his fur 
first official sign of very excited art and many more to come, many more to come. All right, follow our hearts and minds to clear that stand. Have our word. Close the word to all of our guests. We're glad to have you with us today. We invite you to come back again. Get the opportunity to present this.